William D. Cohan, House of Cards, How Wall Street's Gamblers Broke Capitalism. Embark on an insightful journey of revealing the tale of Bear Stearns, a monumental Wall Street securities firm that went from a stellar $400 billion balance sheet and roaring profits, to a tragic downfall with a shocking speed. In House of Cards, How Wall Street's Gamblers Broke Capitalism, William D. Cohan dissects the disintegration of Bear Stearns, the complex factors surrounding its meteoric rise and the ticking time bombs that ultimately led to its catastrophic collapse. Amidst the treacherous 2008 financial landscape, this financial titan crumbled under pressures from the mortgage and housing bubble, leaving a lasting impact on the financial world. Delve into the inner workings of Bear Stearns, witness behind-the-scenes decision-making processes, and understand how a financial powerhouse lost everything. Bear Stearns Crisis The sudden collapse of Bear Stearns in March 2008 sent shockwaves throughout Wall Street. Despite assuring investors of its strong financial position, rumors of liquidity crisis plagued the firm as housing prices fell. Ultimately, the bank's exposure to the collapsing mortgage market and overleveraged portfolio proved catastrophic, leading to a run on the bank. Despite efforts to secure short-term credit, Bear Stearns was unable to stave off bankruptcy, culminating in a forced sale to J.P. Morgan Chase. The crisis highlighted the dangers of Wall Street's over-reliance on complex financial instruments and loose credit. The Collapse of Bear Stearns The book delves into the events leading up to the collapse of Bear Stearns in March 2008. Executives touted the bank's liquidity and reassured clients, despite insider concerns. As the pressure on mortgage-backed securities intensified, the firm started losing cash rapidly. On Thursday, March 13, the firm had only $5.9 billion in cash and owed Citigroup $2.4 billion. Schwartz asked for $30 billion from J.P. Morgan, which was denied. However, J.P. Morgan eventually agreed to provide crucial funding to Bear Stearns for up to 28 days. Bear Stearns' reputation had taken a significant blow, and its ratings on debt were slashed. The book argues that the roots of the firm's problems lie in its unique corporate culture. The Fall of Bear Stearns Bear Stearns's collapse was a result of focusing on increasing short-term profits, overvaluing mortgage securities, and poor risk management. In 2008, Bear Stearns was a renowned investment bank that led the financial world with its shares valued at over $172 each. However, a significant turn of events led to the company's fall. Bear Stearns managers believed they had bought 27 days to save the firm, but Geithner and Paulson had begun to scrutinize Bear Stearns and had a different opinion. The executives faced the fact that the 28-day deal with the Fed and J.P. Morgan was a one-day deal. Bear Stearns's approach had been focused on short-term profits and bonuses at the expense of the long-term. Moreover, they overvalued their mortgage securities. J.P. Morgan's top executives started digging into the company's books and determined that Bear Stearns had overvalued its securities and walked away from the deal entirely, making Bear Stearns insiders outraged. The Fed agreed to take $30 billion of Bear Stearns's most toxic assets, and J.P. Morgan re-entered the deal, but their offer plunged to $4 a share and then $2. Finally, the company's poor risk management played a role, making it challenging to understand the risks inherent in some of their investments, like collateralized debt obligations. Longtime CEO Jimmy Kane suffered the most during the collapse as he lost around $988 million. Faced with the reality of bankruptcy, Kane considered rejecting J.P. Morgan's offer but eventually gave in as J.P. Morgan had almost acquired half of Bear's shares. Bear Stearns' shareholders overwhelmingly approved the deal. Bear Stearns's fate serves as a cautionary tale, highlighting the need for investment firms to balance long-term sustainability with short-term profits. Bear Stearns, The Rise and Fall Bear Stearns had a long and successful history and was shaped by three forceful leaders, Cy Lewis, Ace Greenberg, and Jimmy Kane. Lewis pioneered block trading, which bought and sold large chunks of stock for institutions. Greenberg rose to become the firm's head of risk arbitrage and hired Kane, 
who excelled and became the firm's number two partner. As Wall Street firms began to go public in the 1970s, the risk calculus shifted, and firms began chasing short-term profits and year-end bonuses at the expense of long-term profitability. Kane succeeded Greenberg as CEO, lived well for years, but his behavior grew erratic by 2007. While other firms raised capital, Kane did nothing and disappeared mid-crisis to play bridge and golf. Bear Stearns would soon collapse, and Schwartz replaced Kane as CEO, but the damage was done. William D. Kohan's House of Cards doesn't merely tell the story of Bear Stearns' demise, but peels back the layers of trust, ego, and greed at the foundation of a company that succumbed to a colossal collapse. The book exposes the factors behind the firm's tragedy, its heavy exposure to the 2008 mortgage crisis, as well as the missteps in leadership, and the dangers of pursuing short-term gains at the expense of long-term sustainability. By presenting a comprehensive picture of an iconic Wall Street firm and casting light on the flawed decisions that led to its downfall, House of Cards can teach valuable lessons to leaders, businesses, and readers alike on avoiding the same pitfalls that shattered the colossal Bear Stearns.